These data represent an XPS depth profile. An iron beam has been used to sputter the surface and after each cycle of the iron beam a set of spectra are acquired. And from these spectra we would like to calculate a profile that indicates how these different elements vary as a function of depth. So the way we would construct a depth profile is to define a background using the quantification parameters dialog window and then integrate the signal above the background for each one of these spectra. I've created a data file previously where I've added these regions and I've made use of a parameter which is the average width. And the average width which is easily demonstrated by changing it is a set of data bins that are averaged to determine the point at which the background should meet the data at the start and the end of each region. And using a larger number of average width points means that you stabilize the background and therefore the calculation of the background is more precise and consistent. And we get a better trace within the depth profile that's calculated from these aluminium data. Now it's not necessarily the case that you always have to have a large average width. Here we have much better signal to noise in the oxygen, reasonable signal to noise in the titanium, and virtually no signal in the vanadium at this point. But at some point in the profile, vanadium will appear. So we need to make sure that we use an average width that is appropriate for each phase of this depth profile. If I look at the titanium data, for example, you'll see that the titanium starts off as an oxide and then as the profile continues, the metallic form of the titanium appears and the background characteristics are slightly different. So here's an example where I might alter the average width and also the region itself depending on which of these sputter cycles I'm considering. So in the metal, I have a different start and end from where the oxide is. So once I have all these regions set up on the data, I select the data, go to the report spec page and then transfer the region names into this name column custom report and press the area report. And this produces a table which I can convert to the profile and we can see this probably slightly better if we do some display adjustments and what we see is quite a unstable form for the aluminium trace. We see lots of variation and this even with the average width is a consequence of the noise in the data. And by virtue of the fact that we are using the aluminium signal as part of the calculation of these atomic concentrations, they all contribute to the denominator that noise within the aluminium can also be amplified and entered into these other traces. So if we want to produce a good quality profile, we have to find a way of removing the noise from the profile data, especially the data that has poor signal to noise. One way to improve the quality of these traces is to make use of principal component analysis. And in this instance, it's just a simple case of trying to calculate from the data, not just one spectrum, which is what we were doing using the average width, but here we have a data set that is full of data and has been measured over a long period of time. So although the individual spectra are quite noisy, the sum of all these data will be quite good. And this is precisely the situation where we can use PCA and then the data can be replaced by a limited number of abstract factors that represent signal and the noise is then eliminated from the data set. So I will do this for the aluminium, though we could also do this for the oxygen, etc. But the influence of the aluminium at the moment is the one that I'm concerned about. So we'll perform PCA on just the aluminium and try and obtain better signal to noise by this process. So first I calculate the number of abstract factors. 
and if I look at the number of abstract factors I see there are potentially three abstract factors that would be useful for describing the signal in the aluminium spectra. So if I overlay these spectra again and reset we see what the signal looks like before any processing and if I choose three abstract factors to reproduce the data then we see much cleaner spectra and this is quite useful because not only does it show us the improved signal to noise but we can also see that perhaps the region originally chosen was too broad and didn't include enough of the signal and exclude enough of the background and that's clearer because we see now the oxide and the metal peaks all nicely defined so let's take this example of data through to the file that contained the spectrum where I had the regions already set up so this is the region that I had set up which looked perfectly reasonable when I looked at the noisy data but when I apply this region to the spectrum that has now been processed using PCA I find that I don't really want to use quite so much of the background in order to calculate the peak and we can see that this is quite different from what we saw before so I'm going to now calculate a background for each one of these spectra and we see the type of spectra that you would expect for aluminium when you look at the noisy data it's not at all clear that this is what we're looking at very different however if I overlay a noise reduced versus a spectrum that has not been processed you can see that there is a clear correlation between the noisy data and the PCA data and yes it does highlight the oxide and it also shows that there might be some trace of a metal even at this early stage. So I've produced now a set of spectra that are noise reduced and instead of using the raw data I'm going to use the process data to calculate the profile. The same region names will be used and I've selected the aluminium that is processed together with the oxygen, titanium and vanadium as we had previously and let's calculate a profile once again and the profile now we see is significantly improved in terms of the signal to noise variations within the aluminium so PCA can be used to enhance the appearance of a depth profile that is calculated from a set of XPS data.